Uh, good evening, all. So uh, as mentioned earlier, so my talk is on the effects of posting scheme on the flow and the relative motion of inertial particles in DNS of isotropic turbulence. Uh, so I'm uh, briefly going to describe the motivation for the current problem and provide a brief theoretical background. And uh, I'll po uh, provide some parallel performance of the DNS code that we are running. And finally, I'll present some results for the, uh, where it shows the effects of forcing scheme on the DNS of these inertial particles. Now, uh, particle-laden turbulent flows, it comes up in various different physical applications. Uh, a few of them are, for example, the warm cloud, cloud precipitation. Uh, atmospheric scientists, they're interested in uh, the collision rates of these water droplets, which might enhance the uh, precipitation rates in warm clouds. That's one application. And uh, astrophysicists are really interested in uh, studying the planetesimal formation, where the small planetesimals, they collide and coalesce and form into these larger planets. Uh, another application is uh, potentially the volcanic eruption, where the dispersal of the pl plume uh, in, uh, is, is of interest. And another engineering application is the spray dynamics in the combustion engines. Here, the effects of turbulence on the atomization, dispersion, and evaporation of fuel droplets is the relevant physics. So uh, in all these applications, we need to study the particle pair relative motion. Now, what do I mean by particle pair relative motion? Uh, Particle pair relative motion refers to the temporal and spatial dynamics of the pair separation vector R and uh, the relative velocity uh, vector U. Now, turbulence is generally known to spatially homogenize the uh, passive scalars. However, it induces strong inhomogeneities in inertial particle relative motion. Again, these uh, inhomogeneities can be characterized uh, are of actually two kinds. One is the spatial inhomogeneities, where we have a preferential con a concentration that is quantified by this function called the radial distribution function, given by G of R. And the other inhomogeneity is the relative velocity inhomogeneities. Now, uh, non-Gaussian relative velocity distribution, again, we can see this from the uh, PD uh, probability distribution function PD uh, PDF. And both of these describe the inhomogeneities that uh, inertial particle undergoes when it's in the turbulent uh, regime. Uh, through these two statistics, one can study the role of turbulent fluctuations in driving particle collision frequency. Now here, the collision kernel is given, uh, the expression for the collision kernel. Here, sigma is the sum of the radii of the particles uh, when they are in contact. And this u of r is the relative velocity in the direction of r. And this conditional prob uh, PDF uh, P is of u, uh, ur is conditioned upon the uh, sum of the particle radius sigma. And this g of sigma is the radial distribution function. You can calculate the collision frequency uh, using that expression right there. Now, particle preferential concentration. Uh, so what do we mean by that? No, uh, there are a few para, uh, non-dimensional non parameters that we need to be mindful of. One of the uh, most prominent ones is the Stokes number. Now, this uh, qu quantifies. This is this gives the idea of an inertia for the particles. This is uh, expressed as uh, viscous relaxation time time scale tau v by the flow time scale tau, uh, tau flow. When particle Stokes number based on the Kolmogorov length scale st eta is less than or of the order of one, then denser than fluid particles accumulate in regions of excess strain over the rotation rate. Here s is the uh, strain rate tensor and omega is the rotation rate tensor. Now here is a schematic of uh, such uh, such uh, concentration happening. Now, these uh, the uh, the uh, high vorticity regions they push out the particles from these vortices into these high strain rate regions. So this is uh, I mean you can kind of get a uh, qualitative understanding of how and why the uh, particles preferentially concentrate in certain regions. Uh, Reed, Reed and Collins they have actually performed a DNS study uh, where they where they do show these preferential concentrations. Now here. Uh, we, uh, we see this, it's a slice in a, uh, in a hom homogeneous isotropic turbulent simulation uh, at various Stokes numbers, uh, ranging from Stokes number of 0 0.01 to, uh, to 4. Now, uh, as for a low Stokes number means uh, the low inertia particles. We can consider fluid particles to have uh, zero inertia. That is, the fluid particles respond readily to any forces or stresses applied, whereas an inertial particle will, will lag a little bit behind. 
So as we move from the low Stokes number regime to the high Stokes number particles, we, we see a, a certain differences in how they preferentially concentrate. For example, at very low Stokes numbers, uh, particles at uh, st equal to 0 0.01, we see that uh, there is more or less homogeneous distribution of particles. Whereas if we increase the Stokes number till 0.7 or even till 1, we definitely see these filament-like structures. Those, th those are the high strain rate regions where the particles are preferentially concentrating. And again, interestingly, if we increase the Stokes number further, for example, uh, Stokes number of 4, the preferential concentration seems to have decreased a little bit. Now, this is just a qualitative understanding. The same thing can be understood by this uh, quantitative graph, which plots the residual RDF versus the uh, particle pair separation R. Now, uh, the highest uh, uh, residual RDF is actually seen for a Stokes number of 0.7. Uh, Stokes number of 1 is actually a little bit lower than that. And uh, Stokes number of 4 is somewhere around here. So this kind of gives us a quantitative understanding of why this is happening. Now, again, so DNS uh, studies by the Sundaram and Collins, they illustrate the nature of relative velocity PDF at various particle pair separations. Uh, Gaussian relative velocity PDF at integral pair separation. Uh, pair, pair separation. So if you see this graph, uh, here sigma again is, like I said, the sum of the particle radii at contact. And L is the integral length scale of, of the system con in, under consideration. Now, at a pa uh, part, pair separation of L by 2, that is in the integral uh, length scales, you see a nearly Gaussian uh, uh, PD uh, PDF. Whereas if you go to smaller and smaller uh, particle pair separations, you see this uh, sharp peak with a long tail. That is the non-Gaussian nature of the PDF. That is, these, uh, we, we, have, we are moving away from the Gaussian regime uh, here. So therefore, a closure theory should capture both the preferential concentration and the Gaussian to non-Gaussian PDF transition. So and that's what we are interested in. We are interested in developing a uh, the uh, theoretical framework that captures both these phenomena. Now, let me give you a very brief uh, theoretical background. So, in, in a recent study by us, uh, we derived a closure uh, for the diffusion current in the PDF kinetic equation for the relative motion of high Stokes numbers particles in isotropic turbulence. Now, for uh, Stokes numbers based on the separation R, for, uh, far, far greater than one, that is high Stokes number particles, uh, the pair PDF omega. Uh, with the particle pair separation R and the relative velocity U being the uh, dimensional space, is governed by this PDF transport equation. Uh, here, uh, this nabla U is uh, nothing but a gradient in the U, uh, U vector. And here, DUU is the diffusivity tensor. And this is the unclosed term in this PDF transport equation. We need a closure for this term to be able to solve this equation. Uh, I, I would also like to mention that Originally, we have a 12 dimensional PDF. That is, the PDF is a function of both R, U, and the particle pair mass, uh, the particle pair uh, mass position, center of mass position X, and also the particle pair center of mass velocity uh, V. So it's a high 12 dimensional PDF. And we do provide some certain rigorous arguments. And in that study, we actually reduce the dimensionality of the PDF from 12 to the six dimensional PDF here. Now, uh, for, again, for high Stokes number particles, uh, we have shown that the diffusivity tensor, uh, DUU, can be given by this uh, two-time correlation of the relative velocities, as seen by the fluid at the particle positions. That is by this expression. Uh, uh, like I said, in high Stokes number regime, pair separation R and the center of mass position X remain essentially fixed during uh, the flow, uh, fluid time scales. Therefore, this uh, is an Eulerian two-time correlation. Now, uh, in this study, we origin, uh, uh, DUU can be, used, uh, can be computed by computing just this Eulerian two-time relative velocity correlation from DNS directly. We have also, in a prior study, computed the DUU, which was purely analytical, by the way, uh, was closed by converting the two-time relative velocity correlation into a two-point relative velocity correlation in the limit of the high Stokes number regime. Now, why blue waters? Well, these, these uh, correlations 
are calculating these correlations using DNS is really, really computationally expensive. Now, there are a couple of important parameters here for this particle laden turbulent flow. One is the number of particles considered, the, and the number of particle pairs are considered. And the other is the pair separation bin size delta R. Uh, so, we introduce uh, after performing the DNS on just the pure, the, just the pure fluid. We introduce a million particles into this into the simulation. Now, all these million particles, we have to form pairs of these particles. So they form nearly half a trillion or 500 billion particle pairs. It scales as n times n plus one by two. So it's a, it's a n squared scaling. So if, if you introduce a, a million particles, we have 500 billion particle pairs. And the particle pair bin size we considered is eta by eight, uh, where eta is the kolmogorov groulen scale. Uh, and uh, we computed these correlations using 20,000 processors at the Blue, Blue Waters facility. Binning, just the binning of these uh, relative velocity correlations at different time steps uh, took us nearly 40 hours of wall clock time. So it, it, it's just, just the binning process, not, not even computing any uh, post-processing statistics. So it's a really computationally intensive task. Uh, now just let me briefly give you an idea of how we parallelize the code. So I think, I think most of you are all familiar with this. So we have uh, a 1D domain decomposition generally. And if you do a 1D domain decomposition, uh, an n cube simulations can only be performed on n number of processors. So that uh, greatly limits the, uh, the Reynolds numbers that you, you can actually simulate, because you can't go to much higher, uh, you can't run your uh, simulations on many uh, higher number of part, uh, processes. We have actually uh, done a, a 2D domain decomposition. This is also called as pencil decomposition. So here, the advantage is uh, the n cube simulations can be run on up to n squared number of processors. So this allows us to uh, go to higher Reynolds numbers. Uh, here, Reynolds number is based on the micro Taylor micro length scale. Now, uh, I just want to show you how our code scales with the number of processors. So uh, 1024 process, uh, processors, we are taking that as the base uh, with which we, we normalize. And the, the dashed line is an ideal speed up. That's a linear speed up uh, as you increase the number of processors. And the solid line is what we have measured in our uh, simulations. We are near, uh, near ideal. We are near linear. And at 20,000 processors, this is good enough. And we are doing pretty good, actually, here. Now let me uh, briefly discuss, uh, show you some results of uh, the effects of forcing schemes and what these for forcing schemes are in general. So again, so uh, these are the fluid uh, phase governing equations. This is the continuity, and this is the Navier uh, momentum conservation expressed in this form. Here, this uh, f vector ff is an external forcing uh, applied to maintain a statistically stationary turbulence. So again, uh, as we all know, uh, in uh, isotropic turbulence, you have uh, the uh, energy being constantly dissipated. So to maintain statistically stationary state, you need to supply whatever energy is lost into, uh, into the system again to have the statistically stationary results. Uh, and that's given by this uh, for force vector f. And the particle phase governing equations are given by this. Here, uh, xp is the particle position, and vp is the uh, particle ve velocity. And u of xp at t is the uh, fluid velocity at the, particle, uh, at, at the particle location. And this u is actually obtained by an eighth order Lagrangian inter interpolation. Now, uh, let me uh, describe uh, these uh, forcing schemes. There are two kinds of forcing schemes. One is a deterministic forcing, uh, and another is stochastic forcing. Like I said, you need to provide a certain uh, amount of energy uh, per each time step to maintain the statistically stationary nature of the isotropic turbulence simulations. In deterministic forcing, turbulent kinetic energy is dissipated during a time step is added back to the velocity field. And in stochastic forcing, a random forcing acceleration based on einstein eulenberg process is added to the velocity components. There are two important parameters here. One is the acceleration variance sigma f squared, and another is the forcing time scale tf. Both forcing schemes add energy to a low wave number band. Again, this low wave number energy band corresponds to uh, large eddies, and that's where we want to add the energy so that uh, the turbulence process naturally dissipates the energy down the uh, cascade. 
deterministic forcing, in deterministic forcing, uh, turbulent kinetic energy is initialized with a certain amount of turbulent kinetic energy. And in our uh, deterministic forcing, we maintain the uh, kinetic energy constant as turbulence evolves temporally. Now, this energy dissipated during a time step delta t is resupplied to the spectral velocity components in the range of 0 to uh, root 2. That's the small wave number band where we supply this energy. This is done by basically scaling the uh, velocity components appropriately. So uh, the velocity at any given time step t plus delta t is whatever the velocity at that time step scaled by this parameter. Here, delta e dissipation is the dis energy dissipated at, uh, in a particular time step delta t. And this is the integral uh, wave number uh, range, where k min and k max are the entire wave number uh, range in the considered in the DNS simulation. And in stochastic uh, force, forcing scheme, uh, the turbulent kinetic energy is not kept constant in the, uh, in the stochastic scheme. Instead, a random acceleration term, is f hat, is added to the Navier-Stokes equations. Now, this f hat can be computed, like I said, using Eulenberg Einstein processes, which is given by these expressions. Here, b hat is the uh, Eulenberg Einstein process. And sigma square is the variance, and tf is the time scale. Uh, uh, forcing time scale TF is the key parameter in, bo in, in, in the stochastic forcing. And we study these effects of how the turbulent simulations are affected as we vary the, uh, the time scale TF. And in stochastic forcing, uh, the F hat is only non zero in this wave number regime, zero to root two. It's zero everywhere else. Uh, so let me just briefly give you the DNS parameters that we considered. We consider three grid resolutions, 128 cube, 256 cube, and a 512 cube. And they correspond to a Taylor micro length uh, uh, based Reynolds numbers of 76, 131, and 196, respectively. And we have considered uh, 12 uh, strokes, uh, strokes numbers based on the Kolmogorov length scale, ranging from 0 0.05 to 40. And those are the number of particles. And so, yeah, we have considered five uh, time scales based on the TE, the uh, edit, edit and over time, which is determined using a deterministic forcing scheme. So we have gone from TE by four to four TE. Uh, in total, we have computed six, 18 DNS runs were performed on all these Stokes numbers uh, particles. I'll briefly go through uh, the, these results. You can, I'll, I urge you to refer to our papers uh, to get a more detailed uh, idea. So here, we are showing the RDF for uh, a high Stokes number particles with a uh, RE lambda of 80. And the, the, in, the interesting thing note to note here is, uh, first of all, uh, the, the, the effect of sto the, all these forcing functions is highest at Stokes numbers of 1. So you see the difference is much higher at uh, Stokes number of 1 rather than at Stokes number of uh, 10. So that's, that's what we see for both the uh, Reynolds number of 80 and uh, a Reynolds number of uh, 210. Uh, so that's the same thing. And again, uh, uh, so here we are showing the, uh, PD, uh, the PDF uh, as a function of UR uh, normalized with the variance at a Reynolds number of 210. The blue curves uh, represent a separation of two times the Kolmogorov length scale to eta, and the green curves represent a integral length scale L by two. And we are here we are only showing the deterministic forcing and SF, uh, uh, stochastic forcing schemes three and four, which is correspond to uh, a certain, uh, T, uh, uh, certain edit and over times. And again, so the, uh, the black curve here is the normal Gaussian distribution. And you can see that uh, for the large uh, separations, uh, the integral sc scale separations, the, uh, the PDF is closer to uh, the no, Gaussian distribution than the smaller distri uh, separations. And, uh, and you can clearly see the asymmetry even at the larger time scale. So that means there is a certain preferential concentration or a preference uh, or velocity in homogeneity is present in the system. And well, we'll get a similar idea based on that. It's a different parameter space. So I, I'm just, uh, I just want to conclude. So we have computed diffusivity tensor using the DNS, and pair statistics are obtained using the analytical model are in good agreement with the DNS uh, using uh, uh, statistics. And we studied the effects of large scale forcing in DNS on pair relative motion uh, uh, statistics. The computational resources of Blue Waters allowed us to perform these computationally intensive tasks, and we are really th thankful for that. 
And I, again, I really urge you to all to uh, go through our uh, general fluid mechanics papers to uh, get a detailed explanation. And with that, I conclude. Thank you.